almighty and everlasting God of glory and grace, you are the Lord of life. Keep us steadfast in faith that when temptations assail us, we will name you always as the Lord and the love of our life. We pray in the unfailing name of Jesus, the Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. In today's first reading from Genesis, and in this gospel we just heard, we find uh, two opposite answers to the question, who is going to be in charge, in charge of your life? and mine. Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, decided that they were in charge, that they could do as they chose. God had placed them in a perfect and richly and abundantly blessed creation and gave them the gift of free will. But all of that wasn't enough. They wanted to be more than the creations of God. They wanted to be like God, to be God, the creator. God had limited their freedom by wisely counseling them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they decided they were wiser than God, believing that they knew better than God. That they chose to trust in themselves instead of trusting in God. By the way, that's how that's how Martin Luther defines sin. Sin, he wrote, is trusting, trusting in yourself. And humanity has been doing that, trusting in ourselves rather than God, sinning ever since the first man and woman, right down through countless millennia to us here this morning. Then, in contrast, in our reading from St. Matthew, we find Jesus. Jesus in his humanity, sorely tempted also by the power of evil. After 40 days in a barren wilderness, imagine Jesus' hunger. In his humanity, he was famished. So when the devil, knowing full well, knowing full well of Jesus' divine powers, suggests that Jesus satisfy his hunger by turning stones into bread. We might ask, what's wrong with that? Jesus could prove by the miracle that sure enough, he was the Son of God. Remember, God's voice from heaven at Jesus' baptism immediately before the temptations had declared Jesus to be exactly that, Son of God. 
And during Jesus' ministry, he will. He will miraculously feed a multitude of 5,000 hungry people to their fill with only five loaves of bread and two small fish. But, but with, with this temptation, as with the next two, Jesus keeps his focus. He absolutely and unequivocally was not not going to do the devil's bidding or give an iota of allegiance to the devil. Jesus was son of God. And as the son of God, the father, Jesus, complete allegiance was to God alone. He would serve God alone. As Jesus set out on his mission and his ministry to rescue humanity, to rescue us from bondage to sin and death, God, his Father, was alone, alone in charge of Jesus' life. Now, St. Luke, in his gospel, ends his account of Jesus' temptation with this revealing detail. St. Luke narrates, when the devil had finished every test, he departed from Jesus until an opportune Time. So the devil was far from over, <coughs> far from being done with tempting Jesus. And Satan found an opportunity, an opportune time when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, the night of his betrayal and his arrest. <coughs> Jesus knew the cross and its horrendous and, and horrible and, and unimaginably brutal means of execution was before him. And in his humanity, how Jesus wanted the cup of crucifixion to be lifted, taken away from him, praying earnestly my father, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But again, Jesus kept his faith and his focus fixed on God, his father, affirming, Father God, not what I want. but what you want. And St. Matthew's account of Jesus in Gethsemane ends with Jesus saying to his disciples, get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus triumphed over this temptation to avoid the cross. And then, of course, there was Satan's last temptation of Jesus as Jesus hangs with unfathomable pain on, on the cross of Calvary. There is an ancient legend which holds that the devil whispered into Jesus' ear as he hung on the cross, amid his terrible agony and suffering, the jeering, the jeering crowd below shouting their mocking taunts at Jesus, the devil whispers to him, Jesus, they aren't worth it. They aren't worth it. Come down from the cross. 
end your pain and suffering. Free yourself. Save yourself. And the legend says that at the very moment of that temptation, Jesus prays, Father, forgive them. Jesus deems we were worth it. And in his last moments on the cross, and with his dying breaths, true to God his Father to the very end, Jesus speaks these words of unshakable faith. The devil's every temptation rebuffed and rejected. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus was completely faithful to God his Father with his last breath. He responded powerfully to the devil's every temptation by declaring to the, to the devil that God was in charge, that God was in charge of his life. How is it with us? How is it with us who are the followers of Jesus? Who is in charge of our lives? ourselves or God. Notice that Jesus countered each of the three temptations in today's gospel reading with a verse, with a verse from the Hebrew scriptures that Jesus knew so very well. Each, each response a quote from the book of Deuteronomy. You see, God's word fortified Jesus' faith and focus. And so it is with us. A flabby faith, a flabby faith, isn't able to resist the luring temptations <clears throat> the devil constantly throws our way. Only a, a, a faith made strong by the spiritual nourishment of God's word in the sacred scriptures, read and heard and pondered, and the spiritual sustenance of the blessed sacrament of the Holy Eucharist can do, can do that, can do it. Faith fortified by a, a vibrant, daily prayer life, faith built up by worshiping God, faith supported through fellowship with our sisters and our brothers in Christ in the faith, faith affirmed and validated as we do God's works of love. That's how we will find the power to resist evil and reject the devil and the devil's temptations. Don't laugh, but for me, the church is like a spiritual gymnasium where we come to build a muscular faith, a faith that can withstand the devil's assaults. Only in the power of God with God in charge, with God in charge of our lives, will this wicked one have no power over us? Let us pray. O oh Lord God, alone our strength. The struggle between good and evil rages all around us in this world and rages within us. Keep us 
steadfast in your word. And when we fail and fall, raise us again and restore us by your amazing grace in Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one in charge of our life. 